The Moroccan gang leader, Ridwan Taki's dark journey continued on going up until the Crown Witness brother and lawyer were killed. Nabil started the process to become a Crown Witness as soon as he surrendered to police that January morning in 2017. This meant that he could obtain a lighter sentence and the means to begin a new life in witness protection in exchange for disclosing what he knew about Taggy's organization in court. Nabil entered the station and started talking right away, even though the legal agreement wasn't made until over a year later. Nabil provided more than 40 statements, resulting in more than 1,500 pages of transcripts concerning his former employer, the organization, and his own role in what the Dutch refer to as liquidations. The amount of material he produced, which his previous attorney Oscar Hammerstein compared to a book without a beginning or an end, was one of the factors contributing to the nearly three-year delay in the case's resolution. Another factor was the impending deterioration of Nabdal's relationship with his handlers in government. Nabdal and his family objected, but on March 23, 2018, the OM made his status as a crown witness known by using part of his words as evidence in another case. Ridoan Taghi and Sad Rizoki were named as subjects of an investigation by the OM three days later for allegedly organizing a slew of killings. Even if the investigation had started years earlier, Taghi's name was a relatively new one to the majority of Dutch citizens. The investigation served as the foundation for the Marengo trial. Dutch court cases are given names generated at random, in which a total of 17 defendants would be accused of planning to kill four people and blow up a store that sold surveillance equipment. Taiki and Rizuki were two of the people who were going to be tried in absentia. The trial's opening date was still years away at this moment. In addition to Nobel's testimony, the prosecution also had access to a sizable database of texts from the cartel's alleged boss and other members, which served as additional substantial proof against Taggy and his collaborators. These were taken from the overseas computers of two Dutch companies who marketed pretty good privacy phones, BlackBerry, and Android devices with built-in end-to-end encryption software until they were raided and shut down in 2016 and 2017. PGP phones were the industry standard for illicit communication at the time. According to Juice Nan, a criminal law professor at the Erasmus School of Law, users tended to be very open about what they were ordering, either murder or drugs or whatever, because the systems were allegedly unhackable. According to Hammerstein, Taki's supervisor alone sent 200 to 300 messages on average a day, and that the PGP databases contained roughly 900,000 messages regarding his organization. Despite the anonymity of the identities, Taggy's aliases stood out. They included Ticket to Hell for All Motherfuckers, Public Enemy Number One, and Angel of Darkness. More defendants were added to the case after users were located and messages were decoded. Even after criminal defense lawyer Dirk Weersom was killed in Amsterdam on Wednesday morning, the Public Prosecution Service will continue to call crucial witnesses. Prosecutor Fred Westerbeek told Newsor, continue in a motivated way. We must continue to use the means of key witnesses, otherwise we will not advance in criminal cases. He wants greater possibilities for employing these suspects turned informants. Wearsome, a 44-year-old married father of two, was shot and killed outside of their Buttenveldert, Amsterdam, house. Just after 7.30 am, the defense lawyer passed away there on a Wednesday. He was a lawyer for informant turned crime suspect. Nabil BB was providing evidence against the criminal enterprise that Ridwan Taghi is accused of leading since last year. V linked Taghi to eight different killings, two murder attempts, and plans for two other assassinations. Westerbeek claimed that no one anticipated this would occur. Westerbeek thinks further steps should be taken to ensure the safety of those involved in significant cases. Of course, safety is talked about. A threat may be greater based on information, but there was no such information. Now, he remarked to the program, review is required. On Wednesday, the National Counterterrorism Organization, NCTV, promised to increase security and protection for anyone connected to the Taggy case 
who was assessed to be at risk. The prosecutor concurs with the prevailing opinion in The Hague that Weersom's murder marked the beginning of a new era for the Netherlands. More than just killing a lawyer, this assassination targeted the Dutch constitutional state. He emphasized that the probe is still underway nonetheless. There are indications of additional hardening, which also implies that the rule of law is being undermined, which is frightening to us, according to Westerbeek. The scenario that we presume is indeed that he was slain because he represented important witness Nabil B. He emphasized that the battle is still in play. We are fighting. We really need to talk about capacity, enough people, police officers and lawyers. We need to talk about it. This is a significant challenge, but we are also getting results. We have a thorough criminal case against Taggy. With Weersom's murder, Johan Rijlarsdam, Dean of the Dutch Bar Association, believes that a next level has been reached. He told Newsur, we have to think about the reason too. These individuals are not afraid of anything. They can't be stopped. He said that the risks to attorneys and anyone participating in these kinds of criminal cases should be carefully considered. We must not submit to these types of criminals. Instead, we must confront them and avoid allowing ourselves to be cornered. If attorneys are unable to perform this function, our society will face major issues. The criminal law attorney group NVJSA stated on the day of the crime that if this is connected to the Ridwan Taggy case, which it seems to be, this would be the umpteenth step in the spiral of violence attached to this process. The safety of Wiersum's client was jeopardized by a number of prosecutorial errors. After receiving threats, Wiersum apparently received an offer for a security detail. However, he turned down the government's offer because he had doubts about their abilities to protect him. When he was assassinated, he was still considering hiring his own private security. The murder of Weersom, a father and longtime criminal defense attorney in Amsterdam, has shocked the community and the legal system there. Police said they were looking for a young person between the ages of 16 and 20 who fled the scene of the gunshot, which happened just after 7.30 a.m. local time. 5.30 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Although Bakali is one of those accused in the case, which will probably go to trial next year, he has given police over 1,500 pages of testimonies against the gang since 2017 in exchange for a lesser sentence, according to preliminary court records. Last year, a week after justice officials announced Bakali as their main witness, his brother, who the police claim had nothing to do with the gang or the murders, was shot and killed at his place of employment. Ridwan Taggi, 41, is the key suspect in the case and is still at large. Taggi has refuted all charges via his attorney. Eleven further suspects have remained silent throughout the investigation. The death was described as a unprecedented attack on the legal profession that affects the essence of the rule of law by Femke Halsma, the mayor of Amsterdam. There is anxiety and dissatisfaction among lawyers as a result of this horrifying murder of a parent, a lawyer, and an Amsterdam resident. The case is given top priority by both the police and the public prosecutor. The Marengo trial was slated to begin in early 2021, but in the months prior, it appeared as though things were getting out of hand. When the 13th pre-trial hearing took place in late October 2020, Razuki was still in Colombia awaiting extradition. 43 witnesses had not yet provided statements, a judge had recently resigned, and many trial attorneys were openly criticizing the OM and other attorneys for the way the case was proceeding. An even more dramatic story was developing behind closed doors as the media concentrated on the disorganized judicial proceedings. The FBI had secretly informed Dutch authorities in December 2020 about a fresh cache of decrypted text communications it had amassed. Taghi was being kept at the highest security Dutch jail at the time, which was located an hour outside of Amsterdam. Hollider and the assassin of filmmaker Theo van Gaal were among its inhabitants. The newly discovered messages show that Taghi was in contact with the outside world via one or more corrupt prison guards Van Gogh's murderer reportedly occasionally cooked for Taggy. Following the tip, 
Dutch officials launched a new investigation and allowed Taggy to keep using his phone for surveillance. It would be another year before any of this was made public. That's a wrap on the story of the murder of the Crown Witness brother and lawyer. Leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Turn the notification bell on for more videos like this too. Thank you for watching.